Hello YouTube, welcome to the short video where I'm going to look at undervolting the uh, AMD Ryzen 5000 series desktop uh, CPUs. So this is like for a 5600X, 5900X, 5800X, 5950X, uh, any of those uh, AMD GPUs, if you've ever tried to kind of undervolt through the uh, BIOS settings, which I've shown in previous videos, um, in all those videos we've done a all core undervolt. So that work and if that works for you that, that that's great as in as in depending on the cpu get or the SKU, that that may work perfect but sometimes uh pacific cores may not take to an undervolt as well as others and through having that all core value you may have to keep reducing it down lower and lower to the stage where it doesn't become that effective so in this video we're going to look at how do you do per core undervolting and how you identify the cores uh, that uh, you need to kind of change the values on slightly so that overall uh, it can help your uh, CPU run a lot, lot lower in temperatures. Right, so let's just get straight into it. The first thing we're going to do is go over to the BIOS and show the settings that we want to get started with. And from there, then I'll show you the software we use to test. Um, and then if you kind of follow along, you'll get the idea of what we need to do here. Uh, depending on your CPU, this can take an hour or two of testing. But once it's done, then you should be able to undervolt using that negative curve a lot better than before. Right. So first over, let's go to the BIOS. Okay, we're here in the BIOS main page here. Now this is for the ASUS Strict X570E gaming motherboard. So the, the location of the options may be different for different boards. But from within here, you need to get to your advanced settings. And once you get the advanced options up, as you see here, uh, up in the top, uh, you will have different options and it's advanced again we want to go to. So from here, then you need to find the option that is for AMD overclocking. So this allows you to set uh, undervolting and overclocking settings. So within here then we look down until we find precision boost overdrive. We click on that. So the options I have set in here, precision boost overdrive I've changed to advanced, I've PBO limits disabled, uh, the boost overdrive scaler at auto and then we go here to the curve optimizer. So this allows us to set the value, the undervolt value of the cores. So it might be disabled originally or in all cores, we need to change it to per core. And from here then change every core value optimizer sign to negative and the optimizer magnitude to 30. So this gives us the most uh, effective undervolt or the highest level of undervolt to start with. And that's when we can do the tests to see how we get on. So just make sure you save these settings and that has us ready to go. Right, now that we've the bias done, I'm going to take you over to the PC screen here and show you the, bit of so the piece of software I use that's free to download uh, that will help in testing to find out uh, what cores are giving us errors and where we need to change the values per CPU. So we'll, we'll identify the CPUs that are causing us problems and then reduce the value from 30 down to, let's say, 20, 25, depending on how long you want to take with this testing. Right, so the first thing we want to do to uh, go to here is ocbase.com. Um, and you can just Google OC, OCCT and it'll be the first search result that comes up. I'll also put the link, the link in the description below. So OCBase.com, this is a piece of software that allows you to test your CPU and it will return errors per core uh, if there is any. So go into this page, the OCBase.com, go straight over to download because uh, this is the piece of software we need and we're going to take the latest stable version um, um, we're not going to take the Coolmaster version, just, just the standard download button. Hit that and save. Okay, so that's uh, downloaded. Right, after the file is downloaded, we simply want to uh, open it up to run the application. And I'll show you in here the settings we want to do and how we interpret the data that comes back to make our decisions on how we adjust the values in the BIOS. Right, so first up, the uh, this is the application here. I'll just make it full screen. Now that the software is full screen, we go over here to the left hand side and go to uh, test. And from here then, I'm going to set a extreme. I will set the duration of the test to be 15 minutes. Sorry, 15 minutes. So extreme, just because we can get the errors a lot faster that way. And it's, uh, let's say, once we pass the extreme test, we know our CPU is stable. Right, uh, everything else is fine. Before I click run on the test, the one other thing I want to go to is into settings. And you know, you'll see a number of settings come up here. And just to go through these real quickly, the one or two I'd like to change. Um, if you're worried about critical temperatures, you know, hit that to stop running if it hits 90 
degrees Celsius. It, it, it shouldn't, but if, if you want, and uh, you can easily just stop the test, keeping an eye on the temperatures. But the one I want to do here is stop on error enable. So once I see an error, I want it to stop, show me the code, that's the error, and that's the one I'll go back and change. Grant. So that's all I'm going to change there. So stop on error enabled, back over to test. Uh, let's click run and see what happens. Now, as this is a free version, we have a timer here. We just have to wait uh, before we can run the test. But once that goes to zero, we're good. Okay, so that's gone that. Let's click play. And then keep an eye over here on the left-hand side. We'll see that the uh, test is running away here. And straight away, we have an error. And we can see here two errors found on Physical Core 9. So you just need to take a note of um, Physical Core 9 so when we go back into the BIOS, which we'll do that in a second, we'll, we'll adjust that and rerun the test. And this is the cycle that will continue until you have a 15-minute test in Extreme where there's no errors. Um, so we can run it once more, just real quickly, just to see if that comes up again so quick and if it's the same CPU. So again, just hit rerun. We've all the settings saved and run. So that one only took a few seconds to come up where we had um, you know, an error reported on the core. So it'll probably be the same here again. And there's a lot of um, information you can get up here on top, such as you know, the voltage that's running, uh, your power consumption, um, temperatures, everything it is okay. And again, straight away, we have the uh, two errors in core nine. Right, so next up, we're gonna go back into the BIOS and we're going to adjust the value for core nine and see if that works. Okay, so here we are back in the BIOS and again, we're going to go back to advanced and down to the AMD overclocking. We want to go back to where we were before. So into precision boost overdrive and back to curve optimizer. So we want to scroll down until we find core nine, the one that was reported in the software as having a error. And I'm going to reduce this from 30 to 20. Make sure I save my settings, back out, try again. So let's save this and now let's go back to the desktop. Okay, okay now that we've changed the settings in the BIOS, um, you know, we found the core that was causing the problem. We went back in, we reduced the value. If you want to take your time with this, generally I would reduce the value in fives. And if the same core comes up again in the second test, you know to reduce that down again. Um, and, and you keep repeating this process until you get a clear 15 minute run with no errors. So let's go back over to the OCC T application and let's run again and see if we get any errors. So we'll try and see, do any more cores show up with problems? Uh, and again, back in again, we're doing the same uh, settings as before. So into test, just make sure the mode is set to extreme. I have a 15 minute uh, test run here, uh, everything else the same. And now let's click on run and click run. Okay, so the test is running away here. We can quickly look at our temperatures and uh, clocks on a tool like HW monitor, which is free to download also. So we can see here we're running at uh, 62 degrees all core um, sorry, 62 degrees as, as the package temperature, uh, and this is an all-core extreme test. So every test has been hit, as we see up here, at um, 100% and you know 100% in all the cores. And I'm running at around 4.6, 4.7 um, all-core value, which is you know, which is pretty good and, and good for the, you know the only thing I've changed here is a small optimizer curve. It's reduced temperatures and it keeps the clock on the extreme up at around the 4.7. Uh, 4.6 4.7 mark okay so the test here has got a lot farther than last time as we see here no errors so what we'll do here is we'll let it run and if um you know i'll skip ahead and if an error comes up i'll stop it and we'll discuss it then otherwise we'll see what it looks like at the end of the 15 minutes okay right so here we are back for the end of the test and as we can see here uh 50 minutes of the test uh return no errors so pretty much at this stage i'm happy enough that i found the one core in this scenario that was causing the problem that was my core nine i read Juice the voltage down from 30 to 20, rerun the test and all was good. Um, so this is a cycle you'll repeat for your own setup at home. Uh, you'll set them as we start at the start, we'll do the max undervolt we can. So we'll go per core, we'll set them all at negative curve optimizer for the undervolt and the highest value at 30. We'll run the test, uh, see what error comes up on which core, go back in and then reduce down. Depending on how long you want to be at this, you can you know, reduce it by more to make sure it doesn't come up again. But let's say for instance, uh, you found a core, core 9, you went back in and reduced it from 30 to 25. Save your settings, don't forget that. Back into the uh, desktop, rerun the tool, core 9 may come up again. And again, you have to go back in, reduce it down by 5 or 10 or whatever you decide to do. And you kind of keep doing that cycle. And then in your next run, it may be a different core that comes up and you'll apply it. Hopefully it won't be more than kind of one or two cores that will be the issue here. 
at that stage then you'll have your set values where you can have a reasonably good uh, undervolt on your AMD Ryzen CPU. I need to, this will work in any of the 5000 series. Throughout this test, my temperatures remained at the 6263 degree mark with a constant 4 point, high 4.6, 4.7. Uh, the one or two things of note I would say, um, when this is all finished, this process, make sure you write down or record your values somewhere because any BIOS update or if you ever have to reset it, uh, those values will reset too. So you won't have to go through this process again. But listen, I hope this helps you in identifying those cores that are causing you problems because I've, I've seen a few comments in previous videos where some people have to go as low as minus 10 on all cores. Uh, which wasn't really that effective um, but by applying this then you could have most of your cores in the high minus 30 or st at the 30 value and then maybe one or two with a lower 20 or 15 uh, thus improving your temperatures as i said on this extreme test 15 minute run completely fine and the temperatures remain at 63 degrees now obviously while gaming because you have the gpu going as well and the heat from that that temperature will raise but overall your values should be lower than before so listen give it a go see how you get on and hopefully it works for you if any of this content was helpful or useful for you, you know, please like and subscribe as it helps the channel a lot. Listen, best of luck with undervolting, best of luck with reducing the temperatures in these CPUs. Hopefully this helps a little bit. Any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.